Let me take a look at this design. This shows here another very nice application of DXF for the manufacturing process. So this is a nightstand which I bought at a local uh, furniture store. This is one of the study objects for my upcoming furniture design class next semester with my students. I learn how to uh, 3D model furniture. This is not very complicated. And you can see I have a front sketch, then I have a bottom sketch, and I have a sketch also um, on top. And this was used to create the legs, and the main body, and also some connections. In this case, I just envisioned this as pretty thick wooden dolls. Could also be screws. And these wooden dolls should go through the bottom plate, so it would be a nice decorative element. Everybody that knows a little bit about furniture design knows this is actually a very bad joinery. If there would be a lot of pressure uh, on this part, this bottom part will slide down and to secure this from here I would have to drill holes, etc. So that's not very good. Also, um, down here, if we take a look at this, everything is just blocked out the way how maybe it might be constructed, but it's not really fully yeah, finalized. So you see this wooden part intersects with the leg, the leg has, or the foot has this part sticking out. So in generally, I start working with a very basic sketch and then 3D model everything as needed, which later will result into that this sketch does not 100% represent actually the final design. So having that said, let's go to this model. With final design, then you can see here I uh, used the offset tool and expanded the walls and this back plate we look from behind you can see nicely has an insert let me turn these things off for the moment there you can see the joinery I created so I used the solid modeling tools um, to subtract to cut all the correct joinery. Here at the bottom, let's take a look at this. There, everything is pretty milled out. So let's say the design is done. Big question now is, well, how do we transfer this to the manufacture? There are, for example, all the holes. There are the holes too. And there are the bottom. Because in the furniture industry, you, know, you can send somebody a 3D model, but most times if something can be cut and c-milled, um, let's say if it's a flat sheet or something, and like in this case just has holes, then all I need to know is w how to cut this part, and then where are the center points for the circles, and then how wide is the circle diameter, and then what drill bit do I need to drill the hole and the machine actually does it for me automatically. To prepare this process, you see that I made copies of all the individual building parts that are important and then I rotated them. So I have all the different, also the way how I rotated them is uh, somewhat important. So this one I just flipped to here or this one was rotated uh, 90 degrees to the right side so you can see how this works and this one was rotated essentially this part was taken and just then rotated this way so that the views are really accurate and the part isn't twisted or mirrored and the reason why I did this with all these other parts too is then again you can use the project tool and 
yourself all the individual files basically or drawings from each view. So let me show you how I created those because you can see that these circles are not represented there and that is also why I created the these 3D models first and rotated them correctly like if I would take the physical piece and rotate to the left, rotate it to the right and to create these drawings. I will make myself a construction plane. I just do the construction plane in my case simply because I just want this one to be minus five inches below. Very good. Maybe minus seven. Very good. Because on this plane now I can project everything onto. And it doesn't really matter where the plane is in 3D space. It doesn't also really matter if my objects are kind of like vertically misaligned. It's not important. What's important is that from the top view, all this looks really nice and clean. So now I can go ahead and say tools, project, and then say, so this face, this face, and this face, and maybe this edge. Same here, this face. and this face there, maybe this edge project onto here. And there we are. See, super. Here, there's a radius. So I could, whoops, add the radius. Same, for example, there. I could specify how wide are these two parts away. And from the center point to there, what is the distance? Maybe look from the bottom, so back. So while Shaper is a really good 3D modeling tool, it is actually also a pretty great drafting tool. I can put in the marks where, for example, the center would be for this. What's the overall, kind of like the width there, and maybe the height. So you see, this is actually very, very easy. Doesn't take much work to do. Very good. So let me just uh, remove this. There's one last thing I would like to show. The process, how I positioned all these parts quite nicely. Because while they are in vertical space, um, quite shifted in the top view, they perfectly horizontally or vertically line up. I would just like to show you how I did this. So let me take this, I will move this one somewhere on the grid. So this is a nice left, right, up, down movement. No uh, rotation. And then I make a copy and move this one to somewhere else. Let's say like there. Very good. 25. Whoa. 25, not 5. Very good. So I would like to make a copy and rotate it to the right. And that one is pretty simple. So there, make a copy, move it to the right, turn copy off. Then I can select a vertical face, uh, sorry, edge there. And uh, the green one is the correct rotation axis. And 90 degrees. There, very good. But let's say hmm, this happened, we moved this one by accident. How do we line everything up? Let's go to transform, translate, and say, double tap this one, next. And with the pencil, I start the start and go to the end point. So I have two edges kind of like I can snap to. See, now it's snapped. It's perfectly lined up. 
and I go back to the move tool and simply move it to the side. Let's do this one more time. Make a copy and there, bring it to there. Then I would like this one to rotate this way 90 degrees and here again by accident I moved it. Now I want to line this up again. So let's go back to transform translate. Where do I have similar elements? So we have an element, this sharp corner and this sharp corner. Lined up and then just move this over. And there we are. Perfect. And you see this way you can very quickly create the individual views of your object you want and then create the projection drawings and then those later again. You can export as DXF, clean them up, put them onto a project page um, and then send them to, for example, uh, a factory to getting a quote or for manufacturing. And that basically sums up everything I wanted to show today in terms of process, how you can work with DXF importing into uh, Shaper 3D, creating also DXFs or basically sketches in Shaper and exporting them out to different programs. I have, for example, here AutoCAD, if I quickly open this for the moment too, So I could show you guys this one. If you work with AutoCAD, the nice thing is um, when we send it to here, um, and then I can continue working with it. So when we take a look at this, this is an older design from some years ago. And while I work on this on my iPad, that's actually the nice part about AutoCAD. This all is later saved online in the cloud. Yes, I find it useful. And then when you go to your Mac or to your PC, you can download that file onto your desktop version and continue working there. So it's not that you are locked in in any way. This is actually a very nice and fluid way. And you can obviously too, if you want, uh, save all these sketches into individual files. Um, There, for example, that is the DXF for the bath <laughs> room door misspelling. And from here, this is now stored inside iCloud. You could obviously also have different other storage, for example, Google Drive, Dropbox, and then send it to your PC and download it there and continue working with it.